What is up, my homies? You're back on the Farming Sins channel. Ring them bells and smash them buttons. Before we get started, just a quick reminder we do have Rhino's Cancer GoFundMe pinned to the top of the chat. Share it if you can. Donate only if you want. Right in that is the Discord uh, link and we are in discord today you're more than welcome to join the chat but uh, let's keep it family friendly as much as possible we're here to check out a whole new game flights microsoft flight simulator god it took forever to download folks we're just gonna wait for this to load and i'm gonna adjust the audio a little bit so it's not over blowing my ears i want it to talk so loud Activities. Button. World map. Pro. Op options. Map. General option. Globe. Cat. Div. X. In. Up. Up. I think that's gonna be a lot better folks we drop everything down to like 55 ish 
apply and save. All right. Assistance options. We're gonna leave everything on easy for right now. I don't know what that is, but we're gonna leave them there. Well, let's see what those options had anyway, since we were looking at them. Assistance. Well, basically all your stuff there. Control options. We are going to play with a uh, controller today. Profile. What is this? Nothing I care about. All right. So we got our hangar, content manager, and my logbook. So obviously, I have not played farming, or uh, not farming, flight simulator in many, I'm not even going to say days or years. This has been decades since I played the game. So we're going to flight school. I think that's where we need to start. But I really would like to check out the Egyptian towers and some other cool stuff on the journey flights. That would be cool. I think we're going to play this all week. I think we're going to highlight this game for the week. Basic handling, takeoff, VFR navigation, airline tra airliner training, bush pilot, and IFR navigation. So let's start with basic handling, folks, and let's hope I don't crash. We're going to do the introduction. Um, oh wait, can we change stuff? I guess we just hit fly. All right, let's see what we can do, folks. Alright, number one is the aileron, two is the flaps, three is the rudder, four is up. Oh, I didn't get a chance to read that, but okay. We're taking out this little plane here. Welcome to Sedona. I'm Captain Jess Molina, and I'll be your instructor. For this lesson, we're going to start on the ground and focus on some basic concepts. Fundamentals every pilot needs to know before hitting the skies. This is your plane. A classic. The Cessna 152. Take a look around it. In the simulator, anytime you want, you can easily switch to cursor mode. The cursor is handy for interacting with menus and cockpit controls or instruments. As you can see, activating the cursor also displays the toolbar. The toolbar is a quick access menu that allows you to control various aspects of the simulation. Try to find and open the basic controls panel. The basic controls panel is a useful reminder of the button layout for the devices you're currently using. Now try to find and open the camera panel in the toolbar. The camera panel allows you to access the various views and camera modes of the simulation. Go ahead and close all the panels for now. Right now, we are in the external view mode. Let's switch to cockpit view next. Uh, okay. In front of you is the yoke, the primary means of controlling the aircraft. Yoke. In the simulation, you'll be controlling the <clears throat> aircraft with your peripherals of choice. So let's hide the yoke for now. Uh, hide the yoke. Okay, what's a cursor? Adjust clear shield now. Some 
Some instruments allow multiple interactions. For example, rotating a dial clockwise or counterclockwise. In these cases, you need to lock the cursor onto them in order to interact. For example, take a look at the clock in the middle of the dashboard. Go ahead and lock the cursor on it. Now change the clock time. Uh, you can unlock the cursor go. once you're ready. For now, we're done with the cursor, so go ahead and hide it. All right, as we've seen, when you want to look around you, it's easy to rotate the camera. But you can also move it freely in the cockpit to get a better view of anything you want to see. Even through a window to look outside. That's got a nice view behind it, folks. Nice little plane. All right. Uh, and they want me to hit LB. Uh, uh, hold LB. Pro tip. Once you find a camera position you like, you can okay, save a shortcut it. to easily get back to that view anytime. So L plus B. All right. Uh, now, okay. reset the camera to its original position. Then try switching to your custom one again. Alright, that covers all the main camera functions available in the simulation. Try to familiarize yourself with them a bit more. Then reset the camera to its original position whenever you're done. Alright, I'm done, man. Let's go. Great. I want to fly. Oh, that was stupid. Okay, well. Um, training menu. Aircraft essentials. Rotor, yoke, and throttle. Let's click ready to fly. All right, Let's you get keep... you familiar with the aircraft, a Cessna 152, and a few commands to navigate it through the skies. Come on. In front of you is the yoke. Yep. The yoke is like a steering wheel, more or less. Turn it left or right to control the ailerons and bank the aircraft into turns. Look at the trailing edge of the wings while turning the yoke to see the effect on the ailerons. Boom, okay. Baby. Now, the difference between the yoke and a steering wheel is you can pull or push on the yoke. This controls the elevator at the back of the aircraft to make it climb or descend. Look at the horizontal stabilizer while you pull on the yoke. You can see how it affects the elevator. Wait, what am I supposed to be looking at? They want me looking back here. Nice. 
I already did that. Down at your feet are the rudder pedals. They steer the aircraft when you're on the ground. The upper part of the pedals also control your brakes. In the air, they control the rudder at the end of the vertical stabilizer to yaw the aircraft. This is mostly for small corrections. For coordinating turns or compensating for a plane's tendency to pull left during takeoffs and climbs. Hey, where's the small Look at the at? vertical tail while operating the pedals to see the effect on the rudder. Yep, I see it. That's doing things. All Great. Right. That's working. That's Last nice. but not least, the throttle is located near the center of the cockpit. Pushing forward will increase power. Pulling back will decrease power. First, look at the throttle and select it. Keep it selected and push it forward to increase power. Power is increased. Now, pull it back to decrease power. Power is decreased. Now we'll do the same without focusing on it. Deselect the throttle. Look away from the throttle and increase power. Set your throttle to idle. Excellent. When the engine is on, you'll be able to see the power change on your RPM indicator. You'll find it on the right side of the dashboard. This tells you how fast the engine is spinning in hundreds of revolutions per minute. Next, take a look at your current speed on the airspeed indicator. It's on the left in the main instrument panel. It measures the speed in knots. To check your altitude, look to the altimeter. It's on the right side of the main instrument panel. The altimeter has three hands, similar to a clock. The long, thick pointer indicates 100-foot intervals. The short, thick one is 1,000-foot intervals. And the long, thin one, 10,000-foot intervals. That's all for today. Next time, we'll see how it feels in the air. Yeah, let's fly. <laughs> All right, folks, now it's time to get high. We're in beautiful Sedona. All right. I've got to say, you chose a great day to go flying. This session, we'll get started with some basic controls. Sound good? Sure. Let's see if we can First try. things first, let's get familiar with your surroundings. Out your side windows, you can see we have great visibility over Sedona today. territory. Beautiful, isn't it? See if you can spot the Sedona Airport. The runway should be a pretty easy landmark to find. There she is right there. There you go. Right. Nice. Visual confirmation on the airport. Looks like I might have to turn on the volume still, folks. Oh, nice case here. Yeah, I just hijacked this little Cessna, taking it for a flight. We got the airport to our right. Well, we're passing it up now. So we're just learning how to play this the new game here. Hope you're having a good day.
I hope you can hear me. I think the volume needs to get adjusted again. General options. We need to go to audio because it's quite loud, at least on my end. Oh, what do I sound? We're going to drop everything down to 30. See how that does. Just bear with me for a second, folks. Gotta try to get this to a better volume. Uh, apply and save. And then go back. Uh, resume. We already talked about basic controls while we were on the ground. Yeah, I think that's Time better. To see how it all feels in the air. Uh oh. The aircraft is currently set to a cruise attitude. The position it should be in for regular flight. Oh, that's good. All right, now let's try banking into a turn by moving the yoke. I'll go first. Uh oh, she's tilting. Ah, no, don't do that. <laughs> Holy fart bubbles. Look, that's the ground. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As a general rule, you always want to keep your turns under 30 degrees. Under 30 degrees. That's good to know. Where can I see that at? Could have highlighted that. I Go think ahead she's talking and try about rolling to the right. Oh crap. My turn. You have controls. Turn right toward the city of Sedona. Make sure any control movements are soft and gentle. As we're flying towards Sedona, let's try climbing up and down. Gently pull on the yoke yeah. to climb. Give <laughs> we it a try. It. That's good. For the descent, it's the same principle, except you're pushing on the yoke. Go ahead. Gently pitch down. Where's the airport? There, it's to our right. All right. Make sure any control movements are soft and gentle. Yeah, I'm being gentle, baby girl. Now that you're more familiar with the aircraft and the surroundings, the next step is to go deeper into handling and techniques. Soon enough, you'll be able to enjoy trips all on your own. Ah. That was fun. We didn't crash. That's a good thing. Uh, training menu. Do we get to do takeoff? No, altitude next. Oh, you gave me a yellow. Come on. I was pretty fly. Uh, then we want to do some pitch crap, I guess. Let's see what this pitch is all about. I suck at baseball. Oh, you can hear me fine? Cool, cool, cool. Uh, how about the uh, ambient noises? Are those decent now? To help demonstrate pitch, I've drawn three lines on the windshield. Notice how the middle line matches the horizon while we're flying level. This is the cruise attitude. The lower dotted line is the climb attitude, and the upper one is the descent attitude. Let's dig deeper into what that means. Pull back gently on the yoke until the climb attitude line matches the horizon. Then maintain that attitude. Huh? I did say the middle line, right? Well, 
What line are you talking about? Why aren't you registering? All right, there we go. According to your altimeter, we're gaining altitude. But we're losing airspeed, proving you can't avoid basic physics. You put your plane in a dangerous situation. Oh, okay, don't do that. <laughs> Pull back gently on the yoke until the climb attitude line matches the horizon. Then maintain that attitude. According to your altimeter, we're gaining altitude. But we're losing airspeed, proving you can't avoid basic physics while making a climb. Keep working on it, you'll get better. Now let's level back out. Our speed is increasing and our altitude is stable. That's good. Push gently on the yoke until the descent attitude line matches the horizon. Then maintain that attitude. Sounds like I gotta take my wife to to the hospital. Alright, come on, give me the ropes. Not registering. As expected, with a nose down attitude, our altitude is decreasing while our speed is picking up. Great. Oh, I get okay, what you're Bring us back to, to level flight. Now your speed is decreasing and your altitude is stable. That's good. Try to make only small adjustments to your pitch to avoid overcorrection. <coughs> Hold on, folks. All right, training menu, folks. We're going to see if we can hurry up and get this one done. Uh, rolling turns, power settings, straight level, altitude test. I just want to fly the plane. Come on. Yeah, I enjoy uh, flying in um, other games like uh, GTA 5 is really fun. This obviously has a whole lot of more technolog technical stuff to it. Let's see what she wants us for to do for this lesson, one. For this lesson, we're going to use a line drawn on the windshield to indicate the crew's attitude. I've also added another dotted line to help you bank properly for left turns. Gently move the yoke to the left until the dotted line matches up with the horizon. Then maintain that bank. Are you not going to register it? Come on. Excellent. Now let's see you level back out. Oh, that's easy. We can do that. All right. For the next step, turning to the right, let's see how you do on your own without any markings. At the top of your attitude indicator, there's a series of notches representing 10 degrees each. As a general rule, you always want to keep your turns under 30 degrees. Start banking right until you're lined up with the second notch to the right on the attitude indicator. Then maintain that 20 degree bank while remaining at the same altitude until I ask you to stop. Keep 
working on it. You'll get better. Keep working to maintain a constant altitude during the turn. Level us back out now. Great. Small corrections on the yoke will lead to more accurate turns. Ah, you gave me another yellow. All right, training menu. All right, we're about halfway done with this training course. Power settings is next. And then we'll have to finish our flight school when I get back from the hospital. I just sent a text over to my co-workers to see if we can get some coverage tonight. We're gonna have to go get, get the kids out of school early. Yeah, my wife's been having some minor complications. We're hoping it's not related to her cancer Let's talk situation, about the but we'll find out. If you have the need for speed, then the throttle's for you. Yeah, All control throttle. control for the power output of the engine. In the Cessna 152, that relates directly to the RPM displayed on the tachometer. Pull back on the throttle to reduce RPM to 1800. Put your plane in a dangerous situation. Pull back on the throttle to reduce RPM to 1800. You put your plane in a dangerous situation. I know, I'm trying to figure out what my Pull back RPM on the throttle at. to reduce RPM to 1800. Come on, girl, I'm doing it. Pull back on the throttle to reduce RPM to 1800. Oh, pull back on the throttle, silly goose. Your speed is increasing now. 
As long as you maintain the same attitude, your altitude will keep climbing as well. Keep working on it, you'll get better. I think a bit more practice may be a good idea. No, it won't. Come on, we're done. I was using the yoke instead of the throttle. <laughs> Silly goose. Alright, we got two more lessons right quick and then uh, straight level flight. And hopefully we'll be able to do takeoffs and landings when we get back. In this lesson, let's take a look at the relationship between attitudes and power settings. Attitude plus power equals performance. We're currently at 5,500 feet in a cruise attitude. The aircraft's nose is positioned under the horizon and cruise power is at 2,300 RPM. Try to reduce power to 2,000 RPM while maintaining 5,500 feet. Yes, I did. <laughs> you probably noticed to maintain altitude, you need to pitch the nose up. You could just keep pulling on the yoke to hold steady, but that's not really a precise means of control. Probably better to adjust your trim wheel until you don't need to push or pull on the yoke. Drag the trim down when you need to set the nose up. Drag it up to set the nose down. Try adding trim to keep us at 5,500 feet without increasing throttle. You put your plane in a dangerous situation. You probably noticed to maintain altitude, you need to pitch the nose up. Whee! You could just keep pulling on the yoke to hold steady, but that's not really a precise means of control. Probably better to adjust your trim wheel until you don't need to push or pull on the yoke. Drag the trim down when you need to set the nose up. Drag it up to set the nose down. Try adding trim to keep us at 5,500 feet without increasing throttle. All right, we got that. Come on, give me the green light. Got one more for me less than to do.
That's good. You're too high now. All right, so our Wrong way. You're too high now. Oh, you put your plane in a way. dangerous situation. Increase power to 2300 RPM while maintaining 5500 feet. Get us back to a cruise attitude. Whee, you put your plane crash. in a dangerous situation. All right, we're going to go back. We figured out how to do that. Yeah, let's go back to main menu. Two tests, not worried about that one. Let's go back. So, yeah, when we come back, we're gonna do uh, takeoff and landings. Folks, we're gonna end it right there because I gotta get my wife to the hospital. You guys have a great night. Ring that bell, smash them buttons, and we'll see you next time for more flight set. Thanks, Serial. There's a distance between us It's getting hard to reach out Haven't seen you in seasons But all I hear is your voice I know my limits You can break me down but finish line and I've been counting minutes for quite some time now just to see you again and I Yeah.